All right, Joshua chapter 4. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean past Wait a minute. Chapter 3, verse 17. And the priests that bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood on firm ground. In the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel passed over on dry ground. And all the people were passed clean over Jordan. And it came to pass when all the people were clean past... Look how short time. Between 17 and verse 1. It's like, poof, it's done. We're, class, we're passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, And we don't know where Joshua is. We know that the priests are in the middle of where the river was. The river's gone. It's dry land. We don't know if Joshua's in the middle of the river or he's still on the eastern side or the western side. But God speaks to him. He says, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man. Twelve tribes, twelve men. Now that's very important. Very important. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve tribes. You need to get that. Let me go further. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, where the Jordan River was, where they're standing, the priests. Right there. Out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm. Right in the middle where the river was. Twelve stones. He shall carry them over with you. And leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. So, here's the priest in the middle where the river was. There's no river. It's gone. He says, right where those priests are, I want you to have twelve men from each of the twelve tribes of Israel. I want you to get up a rock. And not only a rock, then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared. Joshua knew that the Lord was going to ask him to do it. This is done before the event even happens. Something about Joshua, God told him, here they are, you're going to grab twelve. Joshua had prepared twelve men for something. He may not know what it was, but he already prepared 12 men. Isn't that interesting? Of the children of Israel, out of every tribe of men, except for Levi, it would have been Ephraim and Manasseh, two from Joseph. And Joshua said unto him, Pass over before the ark of the Lord. And right, so here's the ark in the middle of, the, middle of where the river is. Go over there, get yourself a rock. And move ahead of that ark. So pass over before the Lord your God unto the midst of Jordan, and take you every man of you a stone upon his shoulder. So this is not just a little tiny stone you like David did with Goliath. These are boulders. That's very important. So, where the Jordan is, as rocky it is, there are rocks. Right where the priests are, there are rocks. I don't know how many rocks they're told. I, mean, I don't know if it's just 12, and they take them all. That'd be interesting. But here you guys, can put them on your shoulders. Meanwhile, the Ark of the Lord, the covenant of God, is being carried on the shoulders by a Kohath. So, as these men are picking up these rocks, rock pictures Jesus... They're putting them on their shoulder as a burden. According unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay. Here are rocks placed on the land of Cana taken out of the river Jordan. Now we're not interested in these rocks. Or we may be. I don't know if it's these rocks we're going to get in a minute or other rocks. That this may be a sign. Jews require a sign among you that ye that when your children ask their fathers, not their pastors, not their Sunday school teachers, not their rabbis, dad, yes, son, in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? What are those 12 stones over here, Dad? Remarkable. Be like a child going in a park. And, well, today, they've all been ripped down. But a child going to the park with his dad holding his hand. Or grandpa's like, Grandpa, what, 
who is that man on the horse? Well, that's general or admiral or somebody such and such. And then, well, who is that guy? And you sit down by that statue, and Grandpa would tell him the history of that man that's in the statue. That's, that's what's going on today. Or there may be a plaque there. And the grandfather would read it to the son, which is quite interesting because we're going to see that next. So these stones are caused to be why, what, who, where, when. And they're not figures of horses, they're not figures of men, they're just rocks. Then ye shall answer them. And like I said, here comes history. My God, we got a God of the Bible is history, and we're losing history. That the waters of Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Now that's an interesting cut off because the river stopped and it's building up, building up, building up, building up, building up. There is no river, I think it said from Adam all the way to the Great Sea. There, you imagine here's a guy, he's fishing, he's got his fishing pole and maybe he dozes off, right? And he wakes up, it's like there's his worm and there's no more river. Here's a person that got their bucket to get some water and then the water stops. And here's a group of people going across where this river, well, they're not going to cross the river. The river's gone. That's a sign. Grab these 12 boulders. They're going to be a testimony. So, let's look at this. We got rock who is Jesus Christ, according to Paul, right in the Corinthians. We've got two tablets of stones written by God that Moses carries down with the law. Now we got Joshua. He's got his own rocks. And there's going to be 24 of them. It's quite interesting. Moses has stones. Joshua has stones. When cut off before the Ark of the Covenant the Lord, when it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be a memorial. Makes you remember. The Lord's Supper is to remind you of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and that he's coming back. These stones remind you this is when the Lord stopped the river Jordan for you to cross. There were no rocks. There were nothing for the Red Sea. The sign of the rock of Moses, three of them. The two tables of stone which contained the law written with the finger of God and the rock that, that gave them water throughout the wilderness. Now here are 12 stones that came out of the Jordan. They had to, when, the, when the people go see these rocks, they, they come to them, they say, that is our history. That is when that Jordan River dried up for us. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took up 12 stones out of the midst of Jordan. That's kind of funny because there's no Jordan there, but it's out of the midst of Jordan. So that Jordan is not going to stay dry. As the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the, of the tribes of the children of Israel. 12, correct? Correct. And carry them over with them unto the place where they lodge, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests were, which bare the ark of the covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. So I would assume when the Jordan did not flow as wild as it is should be doing right now which is going to be in a moment now you would look off on the jordan river at this spot and you would see maybe 12 rocks sticking out of the ground or the water that were placed by joshua jehovah saves and you look over here on the, on the land of cana where israel there are 12 more rocks from where the rocks where joshua put now, Joshua's rocks, we don't know where he got them from. 
Were they from the land of Cana or were they from the uh, the other side of Moab or Edom? Well, have that part of that land there are, which is the two and a half tribes of Israel that weren't supposed to get that land. But there are 12 rocks taken out. There are in the land of Cana. Joshua, Jehovah saves, takes 12 rocks and puts them right where the priests are. This is, this is important. This is very important. Now, let's take our Bibles. I'm going to go by the date that's here. Like I said, I don't, I don't know the dates. It could be perfectly well. It may be off a few years or that. But let's take our Bibles and go. This says 1451 B.C. Let's take our Bibles approximately. Let's go 1420. Let's go 14. I'm trying to figure out B.C. 1480 years in the future. Of what has just happened here. Let's take our Bibles to Matthew chapter 3, verse 9. And when you read the wording that they are still there unto this day, Matthew chapter 3, verse 9, somebody shows up. And Jesus says, this man that shows up, if Israel had received Jesus as their Messiah, this gentleman would not have been John the Baptist. He would have been Elisha. And if they had believed who Jesus was, who else would have shown up with Elisha? Moses. You would have had the tribulation period starting very soon. And it hasn't even started yet. But he's John the Baptist because they reject John and they reject Jesus. So when we look at Matthew 3 verse 9, this is something. And let's see. All right, verse 5. We'll start in verse 5. Because we're not really interested in what John looked like and all that. Let's look at what he was doing. Verse 5. They went out from him, Jerusalem, and all Judea. And all the region about, oh, there's our river. There's the Jordan. And he's baptizing of him in the Jordan. Confessing their sin. That's our river. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to this his baptism, he said to them, oh, generation of vipers. Oh, he, he's a great church reader. He's snakes. We need more John the Baptist in our Baptist churches. And has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. Jesus hasn't died or suffered and buried and rose from the dead yet. So let's see your works. That's the law. Law says bring your fruits. That's why I really don't go quoting Matthew a lot. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham. Who's that? That is the foundation of the Jewish race. Abraham was their God. To our father. For I say unto you. Now where is he? He's in the Jordan River. God is able of these stones. Plural. To raise up the children of Abraham. And you've got to wonder when it says over here that these stones are there unto this day. Are there 12 of them? And if they are the 12 we are reading Joshua, wouldn't it be interesting fact based to prove that John the Baptist may be standing where the priests are standing? And those rocks are not put into the into the river until Joshua shows up and places those rocks. And guess who the next important figure is going to show up to John at the baptism? Jesus. Jehovah saves. Well, look at that. Now, if it's not the rocks that are in the river, just look over there on the other side where, where the land of Israel, there are 12 rocks. It's either or. You guys that think you're so great, you think you're so wonderful, God is able, those rocks right there, those rocks, he can raise up the children of Israel. He told Moses, listen Moses, I'm going to wipe these entire people out and I'll raise you a nation.
So there are two sets of rocks. They're inside and they're outside the Jordan River. They are both a witness, a testimony. And John the Baptist uses them as an illustration. You know, John, you know what John the Baptist said? You guys weren't in the nation yet when those rocks were put in here. You weren't in your land until Joshua sent them. And then boom, here comes Jesus. And the Father sneaks in, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. And the great high priest of Hebrews goes down under that water. Yep, those were the feet where Joshua and Israel were. You know what else is going to happen there? The way of the second advent is when Jesus comes into the promised land. That is exactly where Joshua is. That's exactly where John the Baptist is when he brings those Jews into the promised land. Right there. You imagine, I, I, I don't know, I'm taking this uh, maybe out of context. You imagine him stopping the river. All right, all Israel got around me. Church got around me. You see these 12 stones? These are the ones that Joshua put. <laughs> it would be funny again if he brings up Joshua. Joshua, you want to tell us the story? <laughs> As we cross here, the water goes back. You see these 12 stones? This is the same spot that Joshua crosses with Israel. This is the same spot where John the Baptist is baptizing Israel. And this is the same spot that Jesus is going to cross with Israel and his bride. While the word is destroying all the enemies of Israel. So this is past. It's history. And is yet future to happen. This is one of those prophecies. As much as Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he's going to cross in this spot again. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished. Oh, 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 look at that. It's finished. What needed to be finished? The rocks taken out, the rocks brought in, and the people crossing over. That the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto children concerning all that Moses commanded Joshua. And watch this. And the people hastened and passed it over. He's just running. There's a little lack of faith there. <laughs> but don't we all have lack of faith? Jordan's going to come back. <laughs> yeah, well, but after you cross over. That Jordan River pictures death. It may be okay to have a little, little scaredness of death if you are dying. But you're getting over. Listen, I'm telling you, if you are behind the steel of your car and you just got involved with a major accident and you see right in front of your eyes the engine break off into flames and the fire department can't open that door, I'd be frightened too. You're an airplane, you're, you're seated in there, next thing you know that airplane takes a dive, and you're going straight down, I'd be afraid too. Not everybody closes their eye in their chair or in their bed and wakes up to the Lord. But you will cross over death, and if you're saved, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Hallelujah. No one with Joshua dies at this crossing. Isn't that wonderful? And the people that died around Jesus didn't stay dead. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over. Did you get that? All the people. No one was left behind and no one died. That the ark of the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people. So they're the last ones to come over. The children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh passed over arm before the children of Israel, as Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war. Jesus fed 5,000, right? Wrong. 
He fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. 40,000 went across that Jordan. Wrong. That's 40,000 soldiers. That's not counting old men. That's not counting women. That's not counting young men. That's not counting teenagers. That's not counting babies. That's armed soldiers for battle, 40,000. Can you imagine what that population was when they crossed over? Do you see why the Jordan River completely stopped? There was a lot of people there. Much more than made the Red Sea crossing. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they feared him. As they feared Moses all the days of his life, they did not do that for Jesus. Come on, you would think something better than what what Joshua did here is miraculous. Through God working that river closing. That's miraculous. But what could be more so of leprosy being clean, maimed being able to walk and hold things, blind being able to see, ears being able, that were deaf and now be able to hear, and people with infirmities bleeding 12 years and then stop. A dead person comes walking or floating out of a grave. A girl wakes up that was dead and alive. And what do you want us to do with this, Pilate says? Crucify him. Hey, I got this innocent Jesus proclaimed three times. He's innocent. I got this murderer. Who do you want? We want the murderer. Israel in the time of Jesus when he was in Israel was a far worse than what they were right here with Joshua. And Joshua didn't do nothing. It was all God. And Jesus and God did all his miracles and they had nothing to do with it. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of the Jordan. This through there. Um, hello? Hello, hi. What about us? And Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of the Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant Lord were come up out of the midst of the Jordan. They were in the Jordan. They were in the dry bed of Jordan on solid ground and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up onto the dry land that the waters of the Jordan returned onto their place and flowed over his banks as they did before and let's look at chapter 3 verse 15 and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the Jordan or the water for Jordan overflowed his banks all the time of harvest. Right to back where it was. Like nothing ever happened. Except three things. The children of Israel now are over. There is a set of rocks over here. And there's another set of rocks in the river. Other than that, you would never even notice. Except for the fishermen and the people going out and get water. Now they got their water back. The people are down the Dead Sea. Here comes the Jordan. Wow, it came back. And it doesn't even tell us how long it did to do that. So the Jordan's overflowing again. And the people came out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. One month, the first month, the 10th day. The 40th year the children of Israel have come out of Jordan. I mean, Egypt, excuse me. And in four days they're going to do this uh, Passover. This is dated. The 40th year Moses died and they're going to land. We're the 40th year after coming out of Egypt. Get ready for the Passover. And encamped in Gilgal. Now look up Gilgal on your internet. And they, archaeology, archaeology, Gilgal, Israel, Joshua. Put those in your search range. And you will find interesting videos on YouTube. You will find interesting pictures. It's there today. On the east border of Jericho. And we all know what happens to Jericho. But right now we're not in Jericho. 
They've crossed the Jordan River. They are now in their land. And there's a bunch of enemies. They've made it. Here they are. All the people that crossed the Red Sea that were uh, uh, that wandering the 40 years are not here. Their children, here they are, in the promised land. And those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And you want to know Dr. Adam Zirk, Z E R T A H. He was a former atheist until he found these stones. And then he believed God. And he went over there to disprove God. And what he found in Gilgal made him a believer, an archaeologist. Kind of funny, it says in verse 9 again, and there unto this day. I didn't write down the date that he found this. Uh, I'm trying to think. No, I don't have the date on there. Other places have the date. But is that interesting? There they are today. And when you do the video by Adam, and when he describes Gilead, it's a remarkable study. It's remarkable how they did that city. YouTube it. Very interesting. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in the time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. Right there. There he is. When John the Baptist is baptized in this spot, I want if Israel knew where, where they were standing. Because they weren't and did not know and did not were waiting for the Messiah to come. John is clearly spoken about the book of Isaiah. Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan, this spot right here. On dry land so they got two dry land experiences the Red Sea and Jordan Moses and Joshua for the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan before you not Joshua God until ye passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea which he dried up from before us until we were going over it. God has this thing for driving up waters. That all the people of the earth might know. And through Adam Zertol, I apologize if I say his name wrong, you can go watch the video and you can find out, hey, this actually happened. This is a true Bible story. It really happened. You can ask John the Baptist. There they are. There's those stones. Make know the hand of the Lord that is that it is mighty. What about that mighty Jordan? Not mighty enough to my God. God put his hand down and said, You just stop right there for a little while. Let my children go through. All right? You stay, stay right there. Dry up that land. Go. And he looks down the river. He says, everybody done yet? Oh, okay, we're done. Joshua, you want to tell those priests to get out of there right now? All right, priests, get out of there. Y'all gone? They are? Okay. Let's see the Pope do that. Let's see Joseph Smith do that. Let's see the Big Bang do that. My God did that. That ye might fear the Lord your God forever. But they only kept that fear, which they won't. If a God can do that to the river, what can he do to you? And you're to look at God and say, what an awesome God I serve. Not only did he create it, but he stopped it. 
and then he let it go again to protect his children. They did not get wet. They did not get their feet muddy. 